Okay, my friends, this is going to be a lot of fun. This just came out 2-22-22, just a few days ago, and the dark side of online space disinformation about physics, combating physics falsehoods. Well, let's see about that. Okay, I speak about space disinformation all the time. The disinformation is that there's nothing in the vacuum of space. The vacuum of space is 100% filled, completely saturated, with the particles of light, which I will show you are particles, or have shown you. And they radiate in different frequencies, and they smash into the, sur the ionosphere, which is the outer layer of gases that we're spinning through the universe, and scrubbing. That's creating the heat. That's the problem with their space disinformation and their fit false physics. I can show you light is particles, and I can show you light is literally dipoles. All right, here's a little physics disinformation for you. They say light can't accelerate. Well, that's obviously incorrect. That is light. It's from a red laser. Pulsed red laser. Boop, boop, boop. Well, here it is accelerating. If you can't see that as accelerating and you refuse to, 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 to engage in this, then you're not a scientist whatsoever. That particle is accelerating. It's pulling itself out of its wave. And the wave is what? It's magnetism. And why is it magnetism? Because that is the particle. The particles are polar particles. They have a positive, uh, well, this is actually negative, we would call it, the glowy part. And then they have dark matter. We never knew the dark matter was attached to, to, to light. It's attached to every single particle there is. And don't tell me I can't see these with cell phones. We're using smart cell phones to, to take these and they use them for cosmic ray detectors. The same technology. It's CMOS because of what we're picking up is the extreme illuminated radiation into these pixels and then they construct what actually hit the, the, the CMOS. Very, very simple actually. You see this? The apps in these cell phones basically transform the phone into high energy particle detector. High energy particle detector. That's what we're doing. This guy explains from the um, University of Wisconsin. It uses the same principles as the very large experiments. So don't tell me we can't do this. Cosmic rays. High energy particles. Back from 2014, we knew about this. And at this particular time, I think it was then, maybe a year later, I went to the University of Geneva online through Coursera and um, tried to discuss it with them, the stuff that we had found. Because by this time, we already knew about these particles. And uh, there was no discussion. That's the physics problem. All right. What we have to do is get down to reality here. This is CERN, and they wanted to do photon collisions and they couldn't figure out how to do it. Photon collisions, are they, they come together and crush the fields and then they emit these bosons or whatever, muons and electron neutrinos. Now, this is, they call it gauge coupling, Feynman diagram, blah, 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 blah. Now, large, the Large Hadron Collider smashes protons together. A proton in my world is, hold on one second, this is electron flood theory and in air dipoles now Bohr is gone forget Bohr that case is totally closed forever it never worked Bohr had one gigantic positive core and a bunch of little negatives floating around it would go plop case is closed forget Bohr it was crazy from the beginning now Electron flood solves everything because there is nothing but electrons. But an electron is not just an electron of the glowy, sparky, burny part. There's a dark part, a muon. And I showed you that in that particle that's shaped like this. Two of them back to back are just two bar magnets. They go through the air, they concuss, they glow. Only the white one glows, so the black one does absolutely nothing. And I will show you that, or I already have. Now, what makes a proton? 1839 of these all balled together, but the white ones go to the outside because they want to get away from each other. The black ones can just push right together, they don't care. So they go to the center, that's why we've never seen it. We only see what glows away. You wouldn't see that, that's a cross section. You would see this. 
you would see this, and these are all of these are glow. You bang into that, they bounce back. That's what that's what they do. Electrons are bouncy. However, if there's a single one, it will burn right into. That's called static lightning electricity, and it wants to get into a stable condition where it's not by itself. Stable, semi-stable is light. Light will come bounce off of you because there's two particles, not just one. All right, so now remember, 1839 is one proton. <laughs> this is what they're doing. They're smashing a hundred billion protons together at the same time. And then they're looking in the trash that comes out. It's absolutely amazing that they think they're going to find anything that makes any sense. All right, here's right here. It says, the physics case for studying photon collisions. The physics of photon collisions, these are the little particles we're using, the photons, has been a topic of interest for many decades, yes. Indeed, a special meeting in 1978, all right, that's 44 years ago, discussed the prospect of using these photons for collisions. And, but they could only use electrons and positrons. All that is is the electricity. And electricity, yes, you can get some hell of a, a lot of energy with electricity, but not like you can when you crush through the venturi like we did. Now we can create sterile electron neutrinos and sterile muon neutrinos, as I will show you. All right. This is the red particle manifesting itself. You see up here, you don't see anything at all. Remember, this is the only reason we're seeing these particles manifest themselves is because they are being concussed against the Venturi. This is an extremely tiny distance. Um, I mean, it's just almost nothing. So this is just as it's impacting at the Venturi. Now, and that's the only reason we can see these glow. As I showed you, the smartphones will pick up only really highly excited particles, and that's what you got right here. So this is how they stack up, and you wouldn't see these at all until they start to concuss. And then they show themselves exactly what they are. The green is just much more excited. It's very, very powerful compared to the red, but it's an identical same particle. No difference whatsoever. Now don't forget, we're accelerating them. So this is fast and it's a little more powerful here. It's got a little more oomph to it. You see how tight the spin is? That's because it's just been accelerated. Now, it's starting to slow down here. It's curving to the left. That means it's turning to the right. That's how it would. Now watch here. You see how they're right tight together here? Really, a little, just a little tiny ball right here. Very glowy ball. You really can't tell because it's so powerful at that point, but now it's starting to turn into its dipole nature where we can see the two different particles. It's Blue is just too powerful to, to get a whole lot out of it. Now don't forget, there's where they separated, here's where they came back together, here's where the Venturi is, that tiny slit. Other than having this slit there and forcing these fields to compress and separating the black ball, they would have stayed together. That's why they'd never seen these before. Now, why did the white one get through and the black one not get through? Here's the reason. The reason is this right here. The white is the gushy part. See, it's, it glows and it gushes. It's small and big. It, doesn't, it can change. The black never changes, never changes whatsoever. The black is the same, whether it's going forward or go backwards, going sideways, it doesn't matter. Sitting standard, same mass, same weight, same density, same gravity. This, totally different situation. As it interacts with something, it pushes and shoves, it glows. This is a bowling ball, can't get through. Simple as that. And you can see it. You can see the difference. You see the, uh, this one glowing because it's hitting, as it's going forward, hitting all these other particles that are in front of it. Every particle there is, everything, that gases, everything, they have electrons. They have these same particles in them. So when one of them tries to push the other one out of the way, it pushes back. This one glows, and this one glows. This one glows less, this one glows more. And eventually that one will fill up so much that it'll flip, and this one will come to the front. That's called the muon wobble. 
and this is light particles. So this is as small as they get. That is the dark particle. It's dark matter, really, and it's a muon. And it is the, the heavy particle. It creates gravity. It does not absorb. It does not emit. It does not reflect. And now we know it does not compress. Dark matter is a bowling ball. This is what we've always thought of was energetic particles. They all have a dark side, <laughs> just as we all do. All right, you saw the particle coming in here. It was the black and white ball and the black and white ball back to back. It's separated here. When it hit the Venturi, it's only tiny, 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 tiny slit. One slit. The black ball just too big. Can't get through. The white can crush down, and I can show you that. So this is exactly what they want to see, and we're showing it. And then we're showing it separating, which called, that's called fission. When the, the black separates from the white, it's a fission. It fizzes. It fizzes. And here it comes back together. That's fusion. This is cold. We didn't get any extra energy whatsoever other than the Venturi. And all that Venturi was was a very, very thin, forcing the fields to compact. And then the white one can sw squish right through here. The black one can't. It goes around. Totally free energy, as far as I'm concerned. And, that's, and they say it's 200 times more powerful than when it started. Not my words. That's from CERN and Fermilab. Okay, this is exactly what happens. The light is, has virtually no power whatsoever here. It's just a red laser light. By the time it hits here, look at the increase in power. This is radiation backwards. That's called reverse EMF, electromotive force. It's pushing against the particles. You can't even see them because they just don't have enough energy. This makes them so energetic you can't miss them. You don't see those coming here, but they're all over the place. This one you see because it's right in line with the Venturi. That's the whole idea. That makes it so energetic that we can pick it up on these cell phones. And you could do the same thing, but you don't, it takes hours and hours and weeks and days and years to get this kind of result. This Venturi was so tiny, the black balls can't get through. They go around and they reattach here cold f fission, cold fusion, in between extremely energetic particles. Okay, so we're dealing with false physics. Let's start from the beginning. The universe is completely saturated with these particles of light. They are emitted from the sun at the corona out here, it's millions of degrees. The sun's surface only 7,000 because it's scrubbing out here. Same thing with us, 2,700 out here, 100 on the Earth. In between is a bazillion particles of these. So, we know we can accelerate light. We know light is a particle. We know it is a dipole. And as I will show you, or have, it is formed basically like this. Two of these side by side. And when they concuss, they glow. And this is how they concuss. They come through the air, just like this. And the white ones, which are the glowy ones, they push against the other ones. That's what forms it into a circle. That makes it forced into a circle. And as the leading one charges up, it flips. Let me show you that, because we are also captured that. So don't forget, I'm saying that light is a particle. It is a dipole. It has dark matter, it has white matter. The white matter is the glowy part and can squish through the venturi. The black particle is too big to get through. Let's examine this a little further. All right, I don't see any really reason to get any deeper with this now. I showed you the particles were together, they split. That's fission. This is fusion when they came back together. In here is raw energy. I mean raw energy. They claim it's 200 times more energetic than it was be before it split up. Now, if this is the case, and it sure, sure seems to be, you can see the enormous amount of glow. I mean, it's just ridiculously intense. If we, that means 5 watts would give us 1,000 watts over here. And we can absorb, let's say, even half of that, 500 watts. That's 
a hundred times increase the value of what we put into it. You just keep putting more lasers in, you can give more and more and more back. And all you have to do is collect it in basically a solar panel. And then we're going to run it into our devices, into battery packs and cars and heating units and lighting and everything else. That's supposed to be an R, R spur at Gmail. And, you know, I need somebody that's got some power here to do some research and uh, some engineering and get this done. I don't think it's a big deal. I showed you how simple it is. Very, very inexpensive. And if it works, it's a game changer for the entire world.